Discerning Hearts provides content dedicated to those on the spiritual journey. To continue production of these videos, prayers, and more, go to discerninghearts.com and click the donate link found there or inside the free Discerning Hearts app to make your donation. Thanks and God bless. DiscerningHearts.com presents The Heart of Prayer with Father Amon Bork. Father Bork is a priest of the Archdiocese of Dublin and has served as vocations director for the diocese as well as pastor in a number of its parishes. Trained as a spiritual director in the contemplative style, he now serves as chaplain to the University College Dublin, the largest university in Ireland. He is the author of Make Your Home in Me, Reflections on Prayer, Master, The One You Love is Ill, Reflections on Illness and Caring for the Sick, and Mercy in All Things, Reflections on the Diary of St. Faustina Kowalska. The Heart of Prayer with Father Amon Bork. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. God trying to communicate with us. That's a moment of prayer, isn't it? Absolutely. I love that line from the Catechism uh, from St. Therese, that prayer is a simple glance to heaven and that God is glancing back down at me. And it's just that it's in that simple moment that encounter, that inspiration. Like even if, you, if you're if you at home and you get this inspiration, maybe to, you remember a friend and you want to, oh, I better ring that person up and say, hello, I haven't spoken. That's an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That, that's God's life in action in your heart. So Therese is my favorite, one of my favorite saints. I've, I've thank God I have a great number of saints that I love, but she's, uh, she's top of the list. But she makes it so simple. She was like, it's simple. It, we overcomplicate things so much. She wasn't the deepest theologian in the world. She wasn't a mechanic or she wasn't a computer expert, but she was just simple. And she, she's teaching us that simplicity of heart is all we need. We don't have to get the right formula. We don't have to do gymnastics to encounter God. We just have to be simply still in his presence and he will do the rest. And if you take example of, of St. Therese, I think this is like she's a doctor of the church. So this is a girl who had very basic um, education. And then she goes to a convent at 15 years of age and she's there till she's 24 till she dies. She didn't attend theolo- theological classes or she didn't read any fancy theological books. And yet her writings can be used for teaching. So where did she get all this wisdom? She got it by spending time with God. And God, and Jesus promised us, didn't he? He said that, I will send you another advocate and he will lead you to the complete truth. And that's what happened for Therese. She sat, sat with the presence of the Lord each day in prayer and the Lord led her to the complete truth and taught her in the bit midst of her life. And if we can stop ourselves, become aware of God, that God can teach us about how wonderful he is, how healing he is, how powerful he is in the midst of the brokenness of our lives, the frailty of our lives, the problems of our life. You know, he can teach us the deep wisdom of knowing you're okay. I am with you. I'm with you. Can't help but also think of another woman, servant of God, Dorothy Day, who had so much that she had already experienced in her life. And here she is in New York City, and it watches women going into church and to a mass. And she felt this pull, just just this desire, and walked in and was watching them. And something spoke so powerfully to her in that moment that she wanted more. She And this would end up leading her into this a deeper relationship. I mean, that's part of that. I mean, that going in and, and just maybe finding that space in that church, responding to that, that prompting, and then... It, it, what a remarkable outpouring of grace that would fill her life. Absolutely. God constantly speaks to the human heart. At certain times do we stop and listen, that God is always prompting us. God will never give up on us, always drawing us back to life and to love. And sometimes if we can just allow his presence in, he can inspire greatness in the midst of of kind of mediocreness in our, in our life, you know, when things are just sometimes even a mess, you know, 
but he will never give up on us. So if you are listening today and you think that God has given up on you or that there's no hope for me or I can't, this what we're talking about here is for somebody else or it's for the theologian or it's for the, the saint. Spirituality and, and holiness and sainthood is open for all of us. And God is constantly calling us so we can become holy in the midst of all, wherever your, your family life is or, or your work life is or your school life is, that are called to holiness there. And he called Dorothy Day into something incredible. And she had the courage to stop herself and say, okay, I'm not sure what this is, but I'm going to go with it. And one thing I often think of people are, especially young people, I, I think they're often afraid to enter into the mystery of prayer or to enter into holiness or enter into the spiritual life because they feel they're going to miss out on something or it's going to cramp their style or, you know, they're going to look foolish among their friends and that kind of stuff. But actually God never takes away. He always gives. So when we enter into the mystery of prayer, we don't lose anything. We actually gain an abundance. So if we can realize that we have nothing to lose by stilling ourselves and entering to the mystery of prayer, because God wants to give us the kingdom abundance more than we can ask or imagine. What I love about Dorothy Day is her spirituality and her faithfulness brought her to recognize God, not just in herself, but in the people around her, and even in people that other people had written off. I love the story where the elderly man had gone to live in the home that they'd set up. In his, his language wasn't particularly um, suitable for, for children, if you know what I mean, and he was a bit abusive and that kind of stuff, and people were saying, no, you must throw this man out on the street. He's causing problems here. And she didn't. She said, we must love this man. And it turned out the man was in the early stage of Alzheimer's. So he was actually struggling mentally, which was causing him to act in this way. But she, her love and her patience with this man helped him to die with dignity. So she was able to see the presence of God. And I think that's what happens when we enter the mystery of prayer. We begin to see the presence of God, even in the midst of our problems, even in the midst of the people around us who get on our nerves, in the midst of the worries of life, but as we know, the world is full of beautiful people and beautiful things as well. So it's about recognizing that. Yeah, I think that's, I'm so glad you said it that way, because I think the church teaches when we celebrate the great Eucharistic celebration, that the Holy Mass, they talk about what we've just spoken of, the different presence of Christ. I mean, whether it's in the Word or in the experience of at the great reception of the sacraments, and also just in the in the presence of those who minister to us. But he's also he's very present in the people, in each person he's created. He loves them and values them, and he's present even in the ones we don't like. They wouldn't they wouldn't be here if he no, they wouldn't. if he didn't love them. <laughs> Absolutely, you know? yes, for sure. Uh, I love the Jeremiah, you know, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you came to birth, I consecrated you. So that God took infinite, incredible care over the creation of each and every person, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair, the family you were brought up in, the time you were going to be born, your gifts and talents, everything was planned uniquely by God and took incredible care and attention in creating each and every person. And you know, Jeremiah says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew before you came to birth, I consecrated you. So that's, and that God set each and every person aside for a particular task. He consecrated us. He made us holy in our mother's wombs. We're, we're set apart. Each person is set apart for a unique task, a unique gift for the world that nobody else can do or no one else can be. We can only be what God wants us to be for the world. Nobody else can take our place. So if that's the way he's treated me, then he's treated you, he's treated the people we don't like, he's treated, he's created the people that we find it difficult to spend time with. And it's about looking and saying, okay, this person might get on my nerves, this person might weigh me down a bit, but what's in them is the presence of God and to look for the good in people. And again, prayer helps us do that because it helps us to touch into the divine in ourselves and we can touch into the divine ourselves. We can also touch into the divine in other people, you know. I just love that when St. Therese was in the chapel praying and the sister behind her would make kind of terrible noise with her rosary beads. And she found them as a terrible distraction. And she realized actually, you know, this is God's child. The sister was God's child. So God loves this, this sister who's trying to make an attempt to pray with the rosary beads. And so when she saw that in herself, that kind of anger or the irritation with this sister just fell away. 
Um, so when we recognize the goodness and the beauty and the presence of God in others, then the other stuff is insignificant. Well, the, see, the, I think the key begins by seeing the, the beauty and the goodness in ourselves, or at Absolutely. least seeing us through or how God sees us. You know, not well, necessarily how others look or what our perception is, because we can have that, unfortunately, that twisted or false sense of who we are because of what others have said or however we perceive ourselves in the world. But but to see ourselves as God sees us, that, and one that's of the great, key, isn't it? Yeah, it tears up. So one of the great prayers to pray is, Lord, help me to see myself as you see me. Teach me to see myself as you see me. And allow God to enter into allow that to happen in yourself, you know. So allow, allow God to give permission into your heart to allow you to see yourself as he sees you. And I suppose we do grapple with messages from the past or messages from people that were no good or were useless, or whatever. And then again, they can be the fruit of our prayer. We can say, Lord, you know, this thought, I remember a teacher saying to me that I was never amount to very much. And it's always haunted me throughout my life. Now, I'm asking you now to heal me through this. I'm bringing this up to you now, and that's my gift to you in prayer, and I ask you to heal me of this. So the the memories and the thoughts and the the things that rob us of our peace and our, our dignity are brought into prayer and placed before him. And even over time, see, God is very gentle in our healing. So he's going to take time. He's not going to do us any violence. He's going to do us, deal with us very gently. So if we bring a particular area of our life that we're grappling with or we're struggling with or our, our dignity as a, as a beloved child of God, bring it to him and say, Lord, I need healing from this and be gentle and consistent. I think consistency in prayer is so important. You know, people come to me in confessions, Father, I've been, I've been, I've been praying about this thing I'm grappling with. And I, it, I, my, my prayer doesn't seem to be paying off at all. I'm still doing the same thing all over again. And then you ask them, when, how often do you pray? Well, well, I prayed last week and maybe the week before. Well, that's not really consistent prayer. Consistent prayer is about bringing whatever we're struggling with to the Lord each and every day, seeking his healing and his grace and his peace. So uh, we grow in our dignity in a gentle way before God. I remember speaking to a student uh, about he'd been praying for quite a, a considerable amount of time and prayer had become consistent in his life. This this chap had been uh, agnostic at best. And he just entered into prayer and he, over time, he'd grown. So I asked him, what's the difference now between the time when you weren't praying and the time you are praying? And he said, simply, I'm more at peace and I have more confidence in myself. And that's two beautiful things. So in that, that's the fruit of consistent prayer because God strengthens us gently and but surely. I, I think it's important, too, that... You know, for sometimes there's this artificial block for some who will say, well, I, I have to sit a certain way, I have to respond in a certain way, or I can't pray. I don't have everything just right, or I'm not, or it doesn't look like how that person is doing it. And that's, again, where you're just accepting that you need to start here now, today, where, yeah. where you're at, and then work towards not even so much work, just allow it that you receive it and then respond each day, however it may look. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Uh, my mother had a great saying, she said, every cripple has their own way of walking. And, I, you know, everyone has their own way of, of um, approaching God. You come from, to God from where you are, not from where someone else is, but from where you are. And that means... We don't have to wait till we get a right to do it. We just have to start doing it. Like we, when, how do I start communicating with God? By communicating with God. How do I start praying? By praying. And how do I pray? Is just I, I, I sit down with the Lord, or I stand up, or I, I lie down, whichever is easier for yourself, whatever is more comfortable, and I just share my heart with Jesus. So you don't have to get it right. Like obviously there are better ways of praying than other ways of praying, but we have to start somewhere. So if you haven't prayed yesterday or you haven't prayed the day before or last year or this year, you haven't prayed at all, there's no judgment. God is not judging us on that. He's just saying calling us into a relationship. So whatever the past is like, let it go. Just today is the day. Now is the moment. It's just simply slow yourself down. Say, Lord, here I am. This is what I'm grappling with. This is what I'm struggling with. This is who I am as a person. This is my failings. This is my faults. This is what I'm good at. This is what brings me joy. These are the most beautiful people in my life. And, uh, you know, it, we don't have to get the right words. We just have to be ourselves. 
just be yourself. I think that's the, the key for me. That was the key to just be myself instead of having to put on an act or a show before God. I could just be and let him know who I am and how I am. Look, he knows who I am. He knows what's going on in my life. He knows what I'm struggling with. So why do I need to share with him? Because God is not going to change. But when I share with him, I change. I become, I, I start to trust more and more. It's like when you meet a friend for, or a person the first time you talk about the weather and that kind of stuff. And then as you go on, you meet them the second time, talk about a little bit more deeper. And the next time you talk, and you enter deeper and deeper into the mystery of something. Um, and that your trust in that person begins to grow stronger. And to, if the person respects that trust, then you can begin to share with the person the deepest longings of your heart even. Um, what's changed? You've grown in trust to that person. And again, when we share with God in prayer, it's us who grow in trust of God. And we know this is a safe space. This is my space with God. And this is a beautiful space to be in. That is beautiful. The thing is, as you're growing, as you're in that that beautiful communing, the communication, the dialogue, then if your heart feels moved to to learn how to pray a rosary, or to once again <laughs> pray that, or the liturgy of the hours, or or it leads you to certain areas in prayer, begin to follow that. But then also, well, there are those out there who would say that it's important also, as he did, to journey with others, to possibly, you know, begin to go to those, for example, going to church, finding a pastor who will listen and trust that God will lead you in the right direction. Does that seem correct, Father? Oh, it makes perfect sense. And I think really we were all on a journey of, of encounter and discovery of who God is. And like, I remember when I was, I went to a seminary where prayer wasn't top of the list, especially prayer from the heart. Um, we were taught academics, right? We were, you know, that kind of stuff, rubrics, right? Whatever, but actually prayer from the heart wasn't really part of the, so I came into priesthood not being aware of really how to pray from the heart. And, but the Lord, I, I had this deep desire in my heart. I wanted to, I really wanted to encounter God on a deep level. And I prayed for that. Lord, help me to bring people into my path who would help me to to know what is prayer? How do I pray? How do I encounter you? And that brought me to uh, Institute of Priestly Formation in Omaha, which brought me to Deacon James Keating, which some of your listeners will be very familiar with. And I spent a week in a retreat with him. And through his guidance, my prayer life changed forever. And I began to pray in a way I'd never prayed before to the guidance of another person. And I think it's so important that we reach out to people who, whether it's a spiritual director or it's a pastor or somebody who has walked that path before us and who understands the geography of the prayer life and who understands the pitfalls and understands the roadmap of how to pray and someone who's gone that way before us. And we can ask them for advice and help um, because no man is an island and no woman's an island. We we need help of other people. And God has given us the grace of other people uh, to help us to grow. And if there's wisdom there, which they have, I think, why not avail of it? If somebody's if somebody's walked the path already before us, um, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We could listen to what they're saying and we can guidance. Now, obviously, our own unique story will be unique to ourselves and how we encounter God will be unique. But God treats us all the same in regards So he wants to, us all to grow in holiness, he wants all of us. There's nobody excluded from this. And he, he's, he's, as I said, other people have gone before us. And why not listen to the people who have gone before us and ask them their advice? So I'd agree with you. To, if you're struggling in this area at all, and even if you're not struggling, if you're if things are going really well, I think it's important. I go. I've just at my own spiritual director this morning, um, and I go to see him once a month. And it's so important that I have somewhere I can go and share what's going on in my own prayer life, the pitfalls, the resistance in my prayer, the reluctance to pray, or the joy that my prayer is bringing, whatever it is that's going on in your prayer life, so I can share with somebody. And even in my sharing with the person, I can hear what's going on in my own heart as well. And then the person can reflect it back to me and maybe give me a bit of advice or say, look, you could try this or whatever. So yeah, I, look, I agree with you completely. The advice and the help of other people um, is so important. I guess I'm also too really struck by that story of Dorothy Day, because I remember as a young girl when I was 19, I was not baptized. I had a grandmother who was a devout Catholic, and yet I 
remember she would take me to to church with her to mass. I would want to go up to communion. She would say, "Oh, not now, Chrissy. Just wait. The day will come." And finally, when I was nineteen, after listening to this new Polish pope, brand new, and his story, his just his joy and continence, and it was such an encouragement for me to go back into that church and just sit. And I wasn't sure wh- where it would all lead. And I, they, at that time, they didn't have RCIA, quote-unquote, classes or anything like that. I just knew I, I didn't want to leave from what was there, that presence. It, I couldn't describe it. I didn't know how to, to say what it was, but I felt like I was going deeper into a communion, a communication at that time. I was just responding to it. And for many, I think that's, I understand now that's what the church speaks of full communion, when we begin to really go deeper. But he let me step by step. And I think it's important to allow people to take those steps themselves and not shove them in a direction or try to pull them to something. You have to let let the Lord lead. Absolutely. That's where the gift of the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit wants to deal with each human heart gently and um, in a unique way. Look, nobody wants to be forced to do anything. I think if if I was lucky, I brought, brought up in a household where, well, look, when I was living in the house, my parents said, you, you must go to Mass. And I, like, I, obviously I went to Mass. But when I, I got to my own age, of reason to a point, I was, I made a decision myself that I wanted to go to Mass. And I, I wasn't, I didn't feel pressurized into it. Um, so I felt it was the freedom there. And, and I, I took it my own pace with God. Um, and I think it's right. If you're being forced to do something, you'll probably draw away from it. Um, but I suppose to realize that the God we're encountering is a God that we have nothing to, to fear and we're only going to gain and we're only going to enter into something beautiful. Uh, you talked to there about that mystery of the love that you have for God, that God was moving in your heart in a beautiful way. And it, it's very hard to put words on that because how do you explain the love you have for somebody else adequately in words? You just know in your heart, I love this person in a deep way. I'm trying to explain that with, with words, sometimes it's it's quite an inadequate. But we know in the depth of our being that I just love this person. Or The same with God. Sometimes it's hard to put words in it. But there's something going on in the human heart on a deep level that's, you know, drawing us to, to life. And that that's what God is always calling us, is to life, life in abundance. God loves his children. He wants everyone to prosper. He wants everyone to do well. He wants everyone to be at peace. And I think that's where the responsibility, I often think there's a responsibility in prayer as well, because, you know, people say, oh, well, I leave that the prayer to the holy people or to the, you know, to, you know, the people who are go to church regularly or, you know, it's not really for me. I'm just an ordinary person. But I find there's a responsibility for all of us entering into prayer because when we enter into prayer and meet God, we become a better person. We just become a better person because we become, become at more peace. We become more aware of our our giftedness and our beauty, and we become more aware of the beauty of the people around us. So there's a responsibility in some ways for all of us to enter into the mystery of prayer so that we can create a much more beautiful, peaceful world. And we, we look around the world where we're living, and I, I often see it in the, the, the university students, uh, a lot of angst in their face, a lot of lack of peace. Um, and I know that uh, trying to reach out to them and say, look, this is a way to peace through the gift of prayer. But you have to accept where people are at and try and be gentle with them, or obviously as well. But we've only, as I, I probably to sum it up, is that we've only got to gain something by praying, not to lose anything, you know? Well, Father, I, I wish we had more time, but I'm so glad we have more conversations coming and, and discussing this great encounter, this place where God is leading us. Uh, but in the meantime, any final thoughts for someone out there who's listening? What I would say to you, look, don't worry what the past was like. Don't worry about what this morning was like. Start now. Calm your heart. Just become aware of God's presence in whatever way that shape or form that takes. And just share whatever's going on in your heart with God. It doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to be perfect words. Just share with him. And then if after sharing with him, just allow him time just to touch your heart with his grace. And they can do that anywhere. If you're on the bus listening to this today, or if you're in the car listening to this, or if you're at home, just still your heart, turn towards him, just be honest with him, and let him do the rest. 
He loves you. You're his child and he can never stop loving you. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you so much. Grace, I appreciate your time today. You've been listening to The Heart of Prayer with Father Amon Bork. To hear and or to download this episode, along with hundreds of other spiritual formation programs, visit discerninghearts.com, or you can find it within the free Discerning Hearts app. This has been a production of Discerning Hearts. I'm your host, Chris McGregor. We hope that if this has been helpful for you, that you will first pray for our mission, which is to offer authentic and rock-solid spiritual formation freely to souls around the world. And if you feel us worthy, please consider a charitable donation, which is fully tax-deductible, to help support our efforts. But most of all, we hope you will tell a friend about DiscerningHearts.com and join us next time for The Heart of Prayer with Father Amon Bourke.